Manx Radio Podcasts, powered by Shaw. Oh, hello and welcome to this week's Countryside Programme with Kiri Kermode and myself, Simon Clark. And uh, the nights are lighter, you can get out at night walking, and there's been plenty of walking and community spirit at uh, the weekends, hasn't there? There has, there's so many guided walks come available now, and I popped along to Silverburn, and what an interesting walk it was as well. So much to see, and to have that little bit of knowledge as well. You can look out for them yourself on other guided walks that are available now too. Yeah, because it's one of them um, walks where there's so much to see you know I've been on one with Andre Doubledam before and you know uh, looking at the different trees and the flowers there and the, the, the river running by you but you need to remember to go to the toilet first or all that run of water going <laughs> past you don't you and I was also uh, out and about with the communities of Jerby and Andres um, Jerby uh, had a morning uh, get together with their community and walked around the village picking up all the loose rubbish and unwanted stuff that was stuck on the pavements and roads and the hedges around the village and I spoke to Angela Quaggan uh, from the Aranane Northern Community Project and also then I went to, along to Andres Village where they had one in the afternoon uh, it was supported by FIM Capital Beach Buddies, Bill Dale was there uh, Jimmy Allison from the Andres commissioners and also Andrea Holroyd spoke to her, she was one of the organisers at that event and uh, both of them absolutely well supported and uh, you've been at Langness I did, I went along to see Wendy Kegan, the property manager, to see why the Highland cattle have appeared and what an interesting idea they have there taking back the management and control of the 26 acres small holding and, and bringing it you know, back to the fore with all the little species and creatures that are living there and it said, she said it's been overrun for many years and they're hoping to change it back again. All right, let's sit back and enjoy this week's Countryside. Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. <laughs> Well, Kerry, we both enjoy walking around the beautiful countryside we've got here on the Isle of Man. We're so fortunate, aren't we? And, of course, I live in the north. You're based more down the south, so I suppose we don't get to swap too often. But, the you know, the walks around the Point of Air, you come up there, don't you, and Smail and the nature reserves. I've been to Langness a few times as well, and that's one of the prominent areas. And it's one of the ones that actually the sheep are grazing on it as you walk around, and it's it's got to be managed somehow, hasn't it? That's right. It is it is actually the most southerly point of the island. So you talk about the north, and this is the very far south. I went along to speak to Wendy Kegan, the property manager on Langness, to find out what they're doing with the 26-acre small holding. Yeah, we have three highland cattle, Ethel, Edna and Evita who are the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. They are gorgeous, and they are here for a purpose. They're not just here because they're glamorous. They're here because the land must be managed better. To keep this land for our children, our grandchildren, to keep it for future generations, we must protect the land. And that involves managing it properly. It must be managed by grazing, especially. That's the biggest thing, the grazing. And when we first looked into it last year... We were told by everybody that, that's in the know that Highland cattle are the best thing to, to graze this type of land. Highland cattle and sheep, obviously we've had problems with sheep in the past, but I'm hoping within the next year or so we'll get sheep back out here too. It's a lovely setting. It's, it's 26 acres with the cottages, it, private property with the coastal path. It, you know, it's ideal for this type of livestock, especially the native traditional breeds. Yeah, of course it is. It's beautiful and they love it. The, the cattle so far, they've been penned in up till now. Um, to get them used to people walking around them, to get them used to seeing dogs on leads. And all I need people to do is to keep the dog on a lead and to pick up after them. The reason they have to pick up is because dog feces is very attractive because it's made of cereal. It's very attractive to cattle and to horses especially. Horses and cattle, if they are in foal or in calf, if they eat the dog feces, it can be fatal or it can cause them to abort. Um, their calves or their foals so I want people to understand there is reason behind this I'm not being a horrible person I'm not just being argumentative confrontational, I don't want that I want people to walk out here, it's the most beautiful spot ever, I want them out here I want dog walkers, I'm a dog walker I'm a dog owner, I want them out here with the dogs I just want them to show a little respect for the fact that it is private land, it's privately owned Um, it's owned by one person we have had no, we've never said to people, you know, this is the footpath, you stay on it. We've always been, you know, very lenient with people walking on the private land. Unfortunately, if 
that continue with the minority, we are looking at fencing in the coastal path, which would only have to be, I'm told, 36 inches wide. Now, I personally think that would be a dreadful shame if you had to walk in a three foot wide path. It would detract from the beauty of the area. It would be knee deep in delve muck because of the people that don't pick up and it wouldn't be a nice walk. You would have to look down all the time. You wouldn't be able to see the sea, the sky, the birds, which we have masses of out here. We have a lot of wildlife on Langness Peninsula, not just the grasshopper, which of course is, is a big thing. And um, this rare species of grasshopper that only lives in this little tiny spot in the whole of the British Isles. The next closest place this lives is somewhere on the European continent. So it's ideal to have the cattle and the sheep work hand in hand with the, the rare species of flora and fauna we, and animals. We need this. We need them to graze this down because the flora and fauna, the little insects, the little bugs, the bees, you know, all the things that the birds eat. We need to keep this. Uh, it's called sward. We need to keep it down to a level where we can encourage these insects to come, so we encourage the birds to come, so it's ongoing, everything then, you know, keeps going in a natural form. So where did the Highland cattle come from? Are these from, from locally on the island, or did you have to fetch them from Scotland? No, we bought them locally. We bought them from the Manx rare breed place, Bella Lockton. He's been very helpful, but we have taken a lot of advice on Highlands from a guy in the Scottish Highlands, funnily enough, who does seminars on these animals. We've taken a lot of advice before we bought them. We've spent nine months um, looking at what you know whether they would be suitable for us because obviously I'm not a farmer. Mm. Although I'm from farming stock, I'm not a farmer. I don't know the ins and outs of farming. But this isn't a farm. This is an area of land that has to be managed. It's more like I don't know, a small holding, I suppose. So we will have three cattle on 26 acres. I'm hoping eventually we'll have more. But for now, we'll see how we get on with the with Ethel, Edna and Evita. Um, um, we're very lucky that the three heifers that you got here, they are a friendly. Yes. They're, they're not wild beasts by <laughs> any stretch. They will come and, and, you know, want to be stroked maybe. Yeah, They're not tame animals. We're not domesticating them. I have to resist the urge to stroke them every <laughs> time I go out and feed them. I, I just want to cuddle them and they are beautiful. But I, what I want them to do is just avoid people. I want them to get out there and do their job and just avoid people. That's the top and bottom. And to be fair, we have had people who've said, oh, I'm frightened of cows. It'll put me off walking out here. Well, if there's 26 acres and three cows, you, you, most of the time you probably never see one. So that's, that's you know, that, it's not a worry in my mind that they'll be approaching people all the time because they're going to be out of the way. At the end of the day, you want everybody to enjoy it, whether it's a beast or person. Yes, of course we do. Well, everybody has a right to be here. Every animal, person, everything has a right to be here. We don't have the right to stop people doing what they want, and I have no intention of doing that. Langness has always been a very special place, Wendy. You know, it is a beautiful spot. It's beautiful, but it's also an area of special scientific interest, which is the, the DEFA way of saying that this is we keep this area for specifically the flora and fauna that's out here and that must be protected by law is protected, uh, which means, although it's very uncomfortable for some people, there are no barbecues, no fishing, no bicycles. You don't know on your bike if you're running over the last of the grasshoppers. Oh. You can't tell that. You can't, you can't have a barbecue out here because if you set fire to a, a piece of grass, you don't know if that's the last area these things are living in. And once they're gone... They're gone. There's no coming back. You cannot, once a species is extinct, it's gone. Forever. You, it's not going to be there for your kids. It's not going to be there for their kids. It's gone. That's it, finished. So I really want people to understand there are reasons behind all of these, you know, people say, oh, stupid regulations. Yeah, sometimes they seem a bit ridiculous. But if you come and ask me, I'll tell you what the reasons are. If you ring deaf and speak to Dr. Selman, he will happily tell you what the reason is behind it. And there's always a reason behind these things. They're not, they're not taking lightly these decisions to protect areas. That was Wendy Kegan, the property manager from Langness Peninsula. You wouldn't think there's so much um, work and things that go on to looking after these little areas. Well, not little, 26 acres, was it? That's right. Wendy and her team are keen to get it back to a real manageable small holding with the introduction of those lovely Highland cattle and uh, long term, hopefully, some sheep as well. She was saying there's some rare species amongst the, the grass and the different animals that they spot. And she's real keen to preserve it and that's what they're aiming for really yeah and it's amazing because you can get pretty close to to the 
famous Langness Lighthouse as well when you walk around there too, can't you? That's right. And now the cottages are open to, for the public to come and stay. And, and lots of local people do actually rent the cottage for the weekend and just go walking. And what a great place it is for a walk. It's They're just lovely. full of wildlife. Mm. Well, talking about walking, uh, the villagers of Jerby and Andreas got together the other weekend to perform some village cleanups. Jerby and Andreas communities were involved in that. Uh, They went through the villages to collect any rubbish lying on the roads or pavements and the hedges as well. Well, it was in conjunction with FIM Capital Beach Buddies as well. So Bill Dale was along to give his help in hand and the support of Beach Buddies as well. Firstly, at Jerby, I caught up with the chairperson of the Erinane Northern Community Project, Angela Quaggan, and asked her if this was a first for Jerby. It has absolutely been a first, and frankly, I don't think we could have hoped for a better day. And even though the clocks have changed, people still managed to turn out. I think we had around about 40, maybe, all told. Um, coming in and out this morning and helping us out. Beach Buddies were involved in it, and mm-hmm. how did how did that happen? I'm involved uh, with Air and Air Northern Community Project, but also with the Jerby School Eco Club. Um, so we've been looking at different ways to reach out to the community to to just generally clean up our act a bit. So we decided that the way forward was uh, a big Jerby Spring Clean, and reached out to Bill, who's worked with school before doing beach cleaning. Um, to say would he would he be able to support us or offer any advice and they certainly came up trumps. What sparked the project? I mean it's great to see so many young ones involved of course you mentioned about the the school side of it as well and there was a lot of the young ones that got involved today and I suppose that's where you've got to urge them on to keep things tidy. Oh no absolutely I mean I think quite often people think that it's it's somebody else's responsibility that you know something something should really be done about this and we some somebody should really but we are we are the somebody and I think it's showing young people and showing the community that actually if we stand up and be counted we can be the somebody that makes that difference and I think that's very much the the Beach Buddies message as well that you know don't rely on somebody else when you can be that somebody else. Beach Buddies of course renowned for keeping the island's beaches tidy and it was great that Bill and his team got involved with something that's fairly close to the beach in Jerby's uh-huh. uh, point of view but just in the community around the, the land side of it, isn't it? No, absolutely. And as far as I'm aware, this is something that Beach Buddies are looking to roll out across the island, working with schools and working inland as well. That it very much seems to be something that is taking off, that, that you know, that spark of uh, a coordinated front and an effort. And I think that has been the lovely thing that, you know, we've had Beach Buddies and volunteers from Beach Buddies and a massive thank you to them for coming and supporting Jerby Community. But we also had Jerby School Eco club we've had different people all age ranges different parts of Jerby and it really has been a nice representation and to have that community spirit represented and it's one of them things where you think oh well you know we'll mention it but and everyone moans about it but nobody can be bothered to, to get up and do it uh, your team have got the drive to get everyone involved and that seems to be working people care now don't they oh yeah we, we are getting there we are absolutely getting there people are engaging and they're realizing that they can make a difference and we and we are making a difference and it is it is a really positive time and it's it has been a i mean it's it's helped that it's been such a beautiful day but it has been a lovely atmosphere and certainly even down to making brews at the end and people bringing cakes and helping tidy up at the end it has been a really a, a a positive collaborative effort yeah well what's next uh, i mean the the response has been excellent and uh, obviously this could be an ongoing thing by the sounds of it i would certainly hope so i think if you make the effort and you have the momentum going it's easier to keep something pushing forward that is already moving people had said today that they would be willing and they'd love to see it happening again i mean hopefully if we could guarantee the weather conditions then maybe we'd get an even better turnout but yeah, absolutely, we'll keep this sort of an effort going. I'm, I know that Joby School are pushing forward with Eco Club to try and support the community and see th- events like this carrying on. So I can't see us disappearing off the radar anytime soon. Angela Quaggan, the chairperson of the Erinane Northern Community Project. 
Well, in the afternoon, it was the turn of Andreas Village, and they had their community litter pickup uh, throughout the afternoon. And what a amount of people, uh, members of the community, that turned up to support that. I spoke to Jimmy Allison, one of the Andreas Commissioners, and also Bill Dale from FIM Capital Beach Buddies. But first of all, I caught up with one of the organisers of the event, Andrea Holroyd. And asked her, was there a big litter problem in the village? I don't think it's necessarily a big litter problem, but I work in Ramsey and I obviously live in Andreas. And driving home, it was something that I noticed. And when I had a rant on Facebook, as I want to do, people said, well, there's spots in the village that could do with a bit of a tidy. And it sort of went on from there, really. It's not the smallest village in community size, is it? It stretches quite a vast area. It does. And we had 10 routes planned out and every single one of them was manned this afternoon at least once. So uh, I think we've done a pretty, you know, pretty good coverage of the of the whole area. Did you need to twist a lot of ours, or were Absolutely people fairly not. keen? The weather's helped. A great deal of support from the very beginning for litter and for picking up dog do and the weather has been fantastic which has really helped there are two children's parties on this afternoon so little people haven't been in evidence but i think i'd rather be in a bouncy castle as well than picking up rubbish but it is one of the things that you know rubbish just accumulates from all sorts of places and it's a great way uh, like you think there's this tea and cakes and everything inside the parish hall here yeah. it's a great thing to bring the community together as well isn't it it is everyone wanted to get involved i mean they had a lot of support on facebook for it which was fantastic um i think the tea and cake probably swayed it for for some other people um, and so many people have baked and given given cakes and and scones and things and it's it's uh, we've got two people in there serving teas and coffees to everybody so they can have something as soon as they come in i think the problem is if someone sees some litter they feel that it's okay to drop it as well because obviously it's well that's all right so i'll, I'll do it as well and if the litter isn't there then i think people are a bit more discouraged so that's the aim yeah i think some people though see litter and do pick it up and put it in the bin as well there's a lot of people who go around the village with plastic bags when they're walking around as I don't really walk a great deal I don't tend to do that but if I see it as I'm driving home I'll nip back down and and pick up stuff off here and outside the shop yesterday I was picking litter up so uh, yeah most people do do it as 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 almost a a natural thing okay well this is this going to be a a a more frequent event then? We're going to hope to do another one just before TT because obviously we have a lot of visitors to the parish at that time and bride tea rooms do the TTs up there well, the TTTs, is it? Although we don't do that here at the moment, then we will get people coming through, and I think we need to sort of have a bit of a, an effort just before that time. Well, Jimmy Allison from the Andrews Commissioners, uh, he must be very pleased with the turnout and the, and the event itself. Oh, very pleased, yeah. I think a village, like you say, is not what you call extra dirty, and it's only 2% of the people that spoil up for the rest of us, but it's lovely to see people come out, and it's your thing, it is a community, and it's a good community to live in, so let's keep it that way. Over the years... You obviously you've spent a lot of time in Andrus, uh, Jimmy. Has it a problem that's got worse, or just one that's niggled you as you as you're getting older, so to speak? Well, the dog poo is out raised every commissioner's meeting, and they say let's put more bins out, let's put more signs out. But the answer is dogs can't read, and they can't reach the bins anyway. So it's the people that's making the muck. So let's try and nail them, fellas. Yeah, is that the worst problem than litter? I think it is, yeah, because it's quite. Lacks of daisy. I mean, you, you see a bit of litter, you pick it up, and it seems to stay pretty clean, but dog dirt's there every day. So do you think this event, picking rubbish up and making aware, because obviously if you're in yeah. a group, you'll see it then, point, it can be pointed out to people, yeah. here, this is where a problem is. Well, it'd be nice to make people aware of what they're leaving behind. And it's not the dog's fault, it's the people's fault, isn't it? So I don't know what the answer is, but it'd be nice for people just to take a little bit more care. And it is a lovely community. I think it's one of the best communities on the island. Uh, really friendly people. So let's keep it that way. And the commissioners must be pleased with the turnout. Oh, lovely, yeah. 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 There's, it's nice to see people at anything in the community, isn't it? Yeah. So it's lovely to see them here today. And the weather's been good, your thing. Well, Bill Dale from the FIM Capital Beach Buddies. Yeah. yeah. No beach in sight today, so this is something different for you, is it? This is the first weekend in years that (coughs) that we've not run an event on a beach. Uh, In fact, we've run, we've been involved in six different events in three days, and not one of them was on a beach. So it just shows you that everybody's wanting to get involved in this, and the spirit is there. You know, I mean, this is really what I think the Isle of Man is all about. When you see all the local people that's come out here today in Andreas, and then this morning we had an event in Jerby. And you just see the, the enthusiasm to want to do something positive and to make a difference. It's just fantastic. So 
congratulations to everybody who's got involved today and to be, to be behind it, like Andrea here, and then there was Angela down at Jerby. These things don't happen unless you get people like this to, to make it happen. We've just come along to give our support and take all the rubbish away, and so it's just been fantastic, yeah. As beach buddies cleaning the beaches, one of the things you do put over is that the rubbish around inland gets into the rivers, the trenches, and ends up in the sea. So this can prevent that, can't it? Bob? That's right. And, a, and a, a piece of rubbish, all this stuff that we've collected today, things like plastic and, and food wrappers and tin cans, there's one thing that happens to them. When they get crushed, they end up going down the drain, they end up in a stream, in the river, out to sea and on the beach. So even if it's here in the middle of Andreas, which is about, what, two, three miles from the beach, it'll go down the drainage system and then in the river and out to sea. So it ends up on the beach. So that's where 85, 90% of all rubbish on the beach is coming from. So if you get it here, you've stopped it. If every community now decides they're going to have these village well, cleanups, how, how can you keep that going on the beach? <laughs> you know what? I don't care about how much effort and, and time it takes. What's, what's happening here now is that people have seen what can be done if people come back and realize that they've they've done something very special then why not do it all the time you know and 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 everybody seems to want to come back and and have another go so three or four times a year is not out of the question and we've started a schools project and that's been a fantastic success so it, it makes you love the Isle of Man even more when you see stuff like this. This is what we are all about. And I'll tell you what, it's not happening anywhere else in the world. Bill Dale from the Beach Buddies, Jimmy Allison from the Andrews Commissioners, and firstly, the organiser of the Andrews Village Community Litter Pickup, Andrea Holroyd. Really was wonderful. There were some pictures on the Manx Area website to go with that as well, Kerry. There was, there was bicycles found, wheels, uh, all sorts of <laughs> It's bizarre. amazing what you find when you actually go looking. But I must say, the island is fairly tidy compared to some of the, the motorway roadsides in the UK. They're absolutely terrible. So it's really good that people are getting out and keeping our island as beautiful as it is. Yeah, it's just one of the things that really ticks me off, I suppose, in a way, that every car has an ashtray and people who smoke still throw the cigarette out of the window. I just don't get that. But I suppose, I don't know, when you look back when you were younger, did you drop litter? I, I'm not sure, but I think it's it's more drilled into people now that it's uh, you know not the right thing to do and and most of the places are quite well equipped with litter bins but uh, using them I suppose is one of the problems. <laughs> Listen and with having beach buddies doing their wonderful work I think everybody wants to be part of it and feel part of that success and now with all the issues with the plastics getting in our water courses and whatever else it is you know people are taking pride and actually trying to do their own bit for the environment. Yeah, much rubbish brewing around Balasala? Not too bad. Bill and his team are often down Port Greenock where we are and they do a sterling job and out Scarlet too. <laughs> Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Well, as if we haven't had enough walking. You were out walking uh, around the Silverburn, weren't you? That's right. As part of the Easter series of guided walks, it kicked off with a walk around the Silverburn River area. And I went along to see what was spotted along the way. Jenny Wheeler, a very successful walk, guided walk along the Silverburn River today with two very experienced guides. Yes, we've had Simon and John with us today. They've been leading the Foraging and Wildflowers walk this afternoon. Uh, we've had a really great turnout on what is actually quite a chilly day and everyone's uh, certainly gone away having learnt more than just one or two things I'd say it's uh, been fascinating. For people to come out and enjoy guided walks like this and it was completely sold out you couldn't get another person on it it just shows how passionate people are for walking around our island. Yes definitely Um, and I also think what these guided walks help do is give people a little bit of structure a place a time to be a thing to do a purpose to come out and, Mm. and to get involved and that's certainly some of the feedback that I've had today from some of the people that have been um, been walking with us that it's nice to have something planned for them so they can sign up and know where they're going they've got some support they've got a guide uh, and it all feels a little bit more comfortable for them then and to have the experience of John and Simon you know both really passionate about what they do in the countryside and and now with the wildflowers all just emerging from the winter as well it's, it's gorgeous yeah there's um, been plenty that we've been able to see today and, and lots that we're expecting to be able to see over the next few months from uh, from the good uh, advice and words of Simon and John. It's been great. And you've got plenty more coming up with uh, 
2018 Year of Our Island too, Jenny. Yes, we do. Um, over the next three to four weeks, we've got a series of uh, different walks um, and, and not always outdoors, just um, helping you to explore the Isle of Man in lots of different ways. So, um, we, for example, we've got a, a walk with Charles Gard in a couple of weeks, uh, the Great Walls of Laxey. And then we've also got a tour of the power station. So it's an, about an opportunity to maybe find out a little bit more about the Isle of Man, explore somewhere a little bit different, whether that's uh, the power station or the sewage treatment plants or whether that's the walls of Laxey or, or Pool Vaish. So once the Easter walks have finished, Jenny, what, what continues after that for the rest of the year? Well, we're continuing to celebrate the great outdoors during March and April and our colleagues at Manx National Heritage are picking up the baton from us after the Easter walks as they have a wildlife week uh, on the third week of April. We've got um, the Year of Our Isle and trail uh, that's been published this month this is to encourage people to get out and to again kind of get a pair of muddy boots on or yeah. wellies or pair of d- old you trainers can't beat whatever it, can it you? is get wrapped up um, or hopefully soon not need to get wrapped up but <laughs> yeah get ready get outdoors and really explore more and value what there is on our island and the trail booklet has 12 routes they range right across the island so geographically right from the point of fair down to point port st mary these walks are mostly circular they are appealing to people who might not normally get out and walk so if, you, if you're normally hiking up Ohio plantation then this is probably <laughs> a little bit um, easy for you but there are um, some really great introductory walks and another exciting thing that's just been launched this week Jenny tell us all about it uh, yeah we've got our island rocks treasure hunt um, so we've teamed up with um, the Alaman rocks Facebook group um, and we have painted stones with Year of Our Island logo on. We've hidden them in all the glens. Well, we've started with nine, so you've got Glen Helen, Glen May, Summerhill Glen, Colby Glen. We've just hidden some more in Bala Glass, Bishop's Court, and a couple more. And you can find information about those on the Facebook page and on the webpage, which is ourisland.im. And um, just encouraging kids to get out and to find the rocks. If anybody's got children, I'm sure they're aware of the Facebook rocks, Alaman Rocks page. But if uh, any children find three rocks, then they can take the pitch with them and take it down to the Welcome Centre and they'll get a prize. Brilliant. What we do, yeah, I know. What we so do good. ask though is that um, when you've had your picture taken, if you leave the rock back where you found it, or you rehide it either in the same glen or on the same walking route, because uh, we've got the rocks and each of the walking routes as well from the our island trail oh so leave it there for the next person to enjoy as well then that's it that's it it's about getting out and exploring the glens and finding the rocks so yeah it's a lovely walk around the silverburn river isn't it it's uh, just nice and peaceful isn't it there it really is and it's lovely and flat as well so lots of people can enjoy it but it's amazing what is coming out of the hedgerows now spring is you know upon us and the nights are so much lighter everything is coming to life it's just magnificent and so many people are, are into walking nowadays, aren't they? You know, and uh, not all the tracks are suitable for fast walkers. I don't think you know <laughs> the odd stone sticking in your shoe and things, but for for the general ramblers. Oh, it's perfect, the, isn't it? It's really, really good. And there's so many guided walks on within the next few weeks, and you can find them all online as well. So if you want to get out and about and actually have a speaker telling you about the walk, you know, have a look on, on the internet. There's some real good yeah. ones coming up. Yeah, try up. somewhere different, and then you'll learn a little bit about uh, about, about that area, won't you, from, from the people who know. Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Well, this programme has uh, just finished now, and it's made me smile Kerry to think of all the people first of all who wanted to get involved in cleaning up the communities of Jerby and Andreas uh, just on that weekend um, give up their time and Beach Buddies gave up their time and the organiser of the event as well just to want to make uh, their little villages a little bit better and more pleasant uh, for people to walk around in. I do find that people on the island are very supportive of local projects and to have such great organisations like the Beach Buddies, it really does give you encouragement to get out there. I do find the island has a lot less litter than other parts of the UK, but having the support, you know, it really drives forward. 
Yeah, and uh, Langness, of course, it's one of them uh, beauty spots you can walk around and get so close to the lighthouse. And there is something about lighthouses, isn't it? Maybe because you, there isn't many of them. And that's where well, you can get so close it. to that one, can't you? Exactly, and it's so well kept. And, and the whole coastline is full of wildlife to see the seals, now the highland cattle. And they want to encourage people to come and walk and enjoy. And look so, after it. <laughs> and look after it at the same time. Yeah, and also Silverburn, that's a lovely place to walk to. It is absolutely gorgeous. Again, we're very, very lucky here on the island. But to have guided tours and guided walks of these areas and as part of the uh, celebrating our great outdoors here on the island, now springtime's with us, it's about time everyone got out to enjoy it. Yes. Uh, OK, we'll leave it there for this week's Countryside. We're back next week. So from me, Simon Clark. And me, Kerry Kermode. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't sit in the slow lane. Join the fast lane right now with Shaw's all-new Superfast Plus Broadband. Enjoy more bandwidth, amazing speeds and the best value on the island from just £23.95 per month. So don't be left behind. Get a piece of the high-speed action with Superfast Plus Broadband from Shaw. For details, visit our stores in Douglas, Ramsey and Port Erin or click shaw.com. Love being Shaw. Terms and conditions apply.